Oh, good morning, and thanks, Adam, for the intro, and thanks for the invitation, really. Uh, it's kind of changing tack here uh, to talk about local government. Uh, what an interesting first session uh, that was. Uh, can I maybe just say a few words up front? Uh, town planner. Um, a consultant to local government. I've been in private practice for a scary 25 years now. That's a quarter of a century notched up. But to get to the point, uh, for the last six years or so, I've found myself working in what I'll call uh, healthy planning, uh, or the healthy planning movement, if you like. It's six or seven years. It really started off with Susan Thompson uh, at the Uni of New South Wales, and that's kind of morphed into the Healthy Built Environments Program, and I hope that you're aware of that. There's a travelling show last year, so many of the local health district people in the room might uh, remember that. That was certainly a long haul. Uh, led to work with the Heart Foundation uh, here in Sydney and also in Adelaide, and in particular uh, to three or four projects with the Premier's Council for Active Living. Uh, and I'm here under the Active Living, uh, sorry, under the PCAL Premier's Council for Active Living banner today, and I will point to Peter McHugh in the front row here, the manager of PCAL, if you wish to kind of follow any of those things up. Um, look, in my uh, 15 minutes, uh, big 15 minutes maybe, uh, three things. A simple PowerPoint presentation from me. I want to say a few words about the scope of local government action or council action in relation to healthy food environments, creating healthy food environments. Probably broadening the discussion, if you like, uh, from this morning. Uh, then, as requested, a few gaps and a few uh, opportunities. Three of each, really, and I hope that uh, you find it of interest. Haven't heard much mention of local government this morning. How many local government people do we have in the room? Okay, a, ha a, hand a handful. Right. <laughs> um, I put it to you that uh, I would view local government action or categorise local government action, if not government action generally, as three broad options. It's the headings that I want you to look at. Uh, there's what I'll call direct action, doing things, providing things, partnering in things, you know, direct action. Um, a second category uh, would be regulation, and certainly a bit of talk about regulation already this morning. Uh, local government regulating what people do as distinct from doing or doing things in partnership. And thirdly, and certainly not to be downplayed or underrated, is the category that I would call persuasion. Uh, I reckon that just about captures it. I've put a few dot points here just to give you a feel for, for what I'm on about. Uh, you can see direct action, movement system, service provision, water supply, if you're outside of Sydney or the Hunter, and I mean, how important is water supply uh, in, in this, if we're talking about healthy food? Regulation, land use decisions, put my town planners hat on if you like. Um, community land, don't forget that councils have control over community land, and that includes streets. I have streets kind of tattooed on my forehead because I think they're so important. I can't help myself but thinking active living at the same time, so bear with me. And yeah, <laughs> kind of run, they run together, I think. Master planning, food shops. Uh, yeah, healthy food depends on food shops. And under persuasion, I've put education and advocacy. And there's no reason why councils can't play those two roles. Well, there are reasons, and I'll certainly get to that. Now, look, if we cross-tab that, with the stages in the food chain, and I've just done this just roughly, production and processing, distribution, including those kinds of subheadings, recycling and disposal, uh, the conclusion you come to, and I went through this exercise, is that there is considerable scope for, for council action in all, those, all of those areas. Uh, I don't expect you to take, take this in at this stage, given my time. It's so the summary of this, the scope of local government action in the PCAL uh, work we've just been doing. I'll call it the PCAL local government resource. Say a bit more about that in a minute. 
uh, that's important. I could give you a few quick examples of what I might call a taste, <laughs> a taste for some of these actions. If you think of direct action, movement systems, a lot of talk about, okay, there's decent food, but how do I get there? Uh, you know, can I walk there? Can I catch public transport there? And locally, in particular, local government uh, is, is concerned. You think of roads, uh, roads being one of the three R's for local government. Access to outlets, movement systems. I've mentioned water supply already. Chances are most of you are from the metro area. Outside of Sydney, local government... I'm from the Shoalhaven. Local government controls water supply and what a valuable resource it is. Regulation is, you know, what town planners are labelled as, as regulators. And top of the list, and you're probably thinking about it already, is the protection of prime agricultural land. Uh, you may think, you may say state government action, and probably is, but local government are certainly involved in that, and the fragmentation of prime agricultural land. Uh, without, without decent land for growing things on, where's it going to come from, uh, is what I'd say. Second thing I'd mention, it's particularly important, again, it's a town planning thing, is locational criteria uh, from supermarkets to farmers' markets to community gardens to roadside stalls. Local government regulates all of those things. And once again, maybe the mention of roadside stalls might make you all think about going for a ride in the country in your jalopies, you know, but... But where I live and where a lot of people live, uh, it's a great source. And local governments, that's local government's job. Community land, local government is the custodian of community land. And I immediately think of things like parks and reserves, underutilised parks and reserves that could carefully uh, be used for food production. Verge planting. Now, even here in the CBD at my favourite intersection, I think of buildings, you know, buildings with... with uh, um, with planting on them. Down there at uh, opposite UTS, for instance, and City of Sydney's certainly big on that. Look, lastly, under the banner of persuasion, and I don't know if I need to say much about that, education, um, today's theme so far for me, in part from what I've heard this morning, healthy eating options, and there certainly are councils that are act actively involved in that, and I'm keen to hand over to Vanessa on that. Events... Council can organise events, and they do. Councils can uh, promote safe gardening. They can have procurement policies that favours healthy eating. Uh, they can advocate to the state government. They can advocate to the industry. So, you know, careful, but, you know, broad in scope uh, is what I'd say. And, and check, the P check PCAL out if you want more details on that. Now, I've got to be careful because... The gaps are important in terms of my presentation. The first one on my list is a gap in knowledge of what councils currently do. There would be an interesting survey around the room. You know, what do councils actually do? And from travelling around the countryside, and while most of it for me has been to do with active living, uh, certainly healthy food of late, there are so many things going on at local government level, many of which have been captured by projects such as the Illawarra strategy, uh, which Vanessa's going to talk about in the Northern Rivers. I'd also recommend to you Northern Rivers Food Links. Talk about a compendium of actions. So that would be my first gap, you know, a gap in the knowledge of what councils can do. Second uh, gap for me is what I'll call a gap in council... Oops, sorry, I'll blame the machine for that. Uh, gaps in council administration. This really brings me to the... The point of, of my talk, really, and why I'm here under the PCAL banner, a need to coordinate council actions. Uh, purposely pause, because there are all these things happening, and councils generally are such large organisations that one arm isn't necessarily speaking to the other. And I do think that that's uh, it's important, uh, and also a need for champions. I recall, uh, again, South Coast, Kiama Council, long-standing ex-mayor, Sandra McCarthy, health person, and Kiama Council's health plan is still there as a shining light, grabbed, coordinated with the work that Vanessa and Co have been doing 
at Wollongong. That kind of champion, someone to champion this. I look around the room as I say this, as an invitation, really. Um, and the third uh, gap is gaps uh, in funding. You know, all these wild dreams about what local government can do and the potential of 152 of them already out there, uh, but funding is an issue, funding and priorities. I mentioned rate pegging there on the slide. Uh, local governments are cash strapped. Uh, it is a drama and can you imagine the competition for things to do, things to put on the works program? Uh, and I th immediately think, and you probably are too, about roads and potholes and certainly outside of Sydney, that's the big bucks. There are gaps, I think, that we, we could turn to. <coughs> Excuse me. The, um, <coughs> my opportunities kind of relate to that, and this really brings me to, uh, to the point. I think the opportunity <coughs> for coordination of activities provided by local government's integrated planning and reporting framework. Now, most of you probably haven't heard of the IPR framework. Uh, for nine years now, councils have been required to try and integrate their activities, their planning activities and their reporting activities so that they're speaking to each other. I'll put it into some jargon for you, if you like, some horizontal coordination you know, and some vertical coordination. I certainly found, uh, uh, found it really to be most promising. This is the heart of the PCAL IPR uh, project, which we've been working on. The words are there. We're turning it into a website. Um, and I'll just say a bit more about it in a, in a minute. Obviously, it's a, the PCAL project. And I'd like to put it to you that there's a role for the health sector in taking advantage of or utilising local government's IPR framework. Every council's got to do it. Every council has done it. And do you find much of a mention of food in there? You'd be surprised. You certainly find health in there. You certainly find active, healthy communities in there. Maybe not specifically food. This is what the uh, framework looks like. And I really don't expect uh, you to be able to take all this in. Ooh, sorry about that, folks. What's happening here? Right, better put that down so I don't play with it, huh? A few things to note. The centrepiece is the community strategic plan. Developed on the basis of community engagement, if you see on the right there, and the driver. If it's not in the CSP, it ain't going to happen, that kind of thing. Broad terms, broad terms. Fed by community engagement, and can I put it to you that that's you uh, as, as kind of local government, as residents, but also as health professionals. Councils have to review this every four years. Elections not all that far away. Please open your ears, keep your ears open, keep your eyes peeled for it, or the other way around and have a go at trying to plug these things in to try and boost this as a sense of priority in local councils, maybe your local council. So I see you as part of the community, but also if you look up the top, you'll see the attempt to provide a, straight, a direct link there to the state plan, had mention of the state plan already, and other relevant plans, think town plan, the regional plan, sub-regional plans uh, from the Department of Planning as well. Uh, the idea being, in logical terms, the community strategic plan, the, the community's priorities, aspirations, objectives, if you like, that cascade down, grabbing other strategic plans, that could be a health plan. And down through four-year delivery program, literally the works program for the council, running events, etc. And what we're going to do this year, all wrapped up in a logical sense. Sounds good. Sounds logical, yeah, you might say, yeah, but we ain't like, people ain't like that, and maybe that's true. But here's a chance for us, uh, I think all of us really, to, to utilise this framework to try and build matters of food into local government, even more so than perhaps what it is already. Um, the uh, second opportunity, and they've both come up here, 
I see is from the local government reviews that are happening. Uh, two reviews of local government both finished their final reports in October last year. One kind of industry driven, Destination 2031, and one to do with, uh, with a review of the Local Government Act. They both reported, worth a look, but I'm pleased to say that the Local Government Act review, and this is a quote, sees this I, that IPR framework that I flashed uh, as the centrepiece. I should mention that what the PCAL resource does is unpack this. So the PCAL website uh, takes each of these elements and says, well, okay, how, can, how does this relate to, to food? There's talk in these reviews of boundary adjustments, of, of amalgamations of councils and the like, and one, one immediate thought for me is, gee, wouldn't it be good if council boundaries could line up with, say, local health district boundaries? Uh, you know, if there was some rationalisation there of boundaries. Amalgamations is a tricky one, uh, a, a, a dangerous one. They're still talking voluntary amalgamations. And what's perhaps seen as an alternative, and really my link uh, to Vanessa, is this idea of regional cooperation. And it's almost by way of introduction that I would cite the Illawarra Regional Food Strategy, if you're thinking, gee, what's the scope of local government? Or if you're thinking, how can councils work regionally and how can we join with them? You won't go past these two projects, the Illawarra Regional Food Strategy and also the Northern Rivers Food Links Project. Uh, it's coming from left field, this talk of local government, but I really hope that you find, uh, uh, find that of interest and something that you can pursue as residents uh, you know, because you live there and it's your street, say, and think of, the, think of you know, Gardening Australia and Verge Planning, Gorilla Garden, think of that, local, local. Um, that's really all I want to say. Uh, I hope that you might want to ask a question or so later, but before I do, let me just say, or just at least um, alert you to where to find stuff about this project. Uh, there's the PK website, Peter McHugh is here. Here's uh, PCAL's future resources. Top of the list there is what I've tried to give you, give you my two bobs worth about, the IPR resource, how to use that mechanism, uh, but also a particular case study on the Illawarra food strategy, uh, healthy eating key messages, and there's Peter's uh, details.